It's the most dramatic forging technique I've ever seen burning the edge of the knife to harden it. Not to mention the strength of the knife even Nielsen's best efforts couldn't leave a mark on it. Today all the bigwigs are here and just by looking at their faces we know that the content is definitely not low. The program has never been ambiguous when it comes to questions for the bigwigs and in the opening round the contestants are directly asked to produce a pile of scrap metal. The contestant must hammer out a blade length between 25-37 cm but the total length cannot exceed 55 cm of the characteristic short knife. The 3 hour countdown to forge the knife officially begins. Despite all the materials given by the show less than 30 of them can actually be used. Wilbur who has a lot of experience in forging knives immediately spotted this lawnmower blade. After seeing it he even thought about the hardening technique. He plans to hammer a large competitive chopping blade which will be able to chop big and small with no problem. Yusia looked at the pile of junk and was a bit lost for words. But seeing this lawnmower blade he did have a plan. Yusia decides to design a watermelon chopping knife which can cut and chop and should be fine to take down for testing. And Ben was planning to come up with a camping knife a conglomerate with a Saxon knife. The combination of the two is sure to skyrocket in power. In addition to everyone's choice of lawnmower blades he also cut an angle iron down. It looks like he's not only going for the knife he's going for the whole three. This actively choosing three pieces Ben was also the first person. Nerain also planned to have a Bowie and Saxon collection of knives. As for the material he also picked a lawnmower blade big enough and hard enough. Looks like Wilbur showed everyone the way. The key is that the steel doesn't have to be treated and can be forged directly into knives. At this point Wilbur the fastest has already started forging the steel blanks but the material is just a bit temperamental. The young Naren however decided to forge it with a press first and then with a power hammer. His first time using this hammer Nalan had a feeling of great surprise. Before he could react the steel blanks were already drawn. He decided that after he got his bonus he absolutely had to hold him one. Ben finished cutting the angle iron and walked back to the tool bench with a calm face. Good man he really doesn't think of himself as an outsider. Ben was going to make a meat sandwich pattern of three. He was going to hammer the foot iron into a U-shape then stretch the steel blanks and do the stuffing stuffing maneuver. Nice pair of invisible iron hands slightly funny but very silky smooth technique. After all Ben is the only one who can hammer three pieces so easily. Yusia heats up the steel blank and then begins to forge and elongate it as well. His piece of steel looks like it hasn't been cut and sure enough it's a big one after it's elongated. He started running the power hammer press back and forth for quicker molding. It was a bit tedious but really fast. And now passes Ben puts on his sunglasses and starts to beat and sharpen the knife embryo. The big spark almost flew into Nielsen's crutch. Good lord is that a hint this early. Ben then heats up the blade to finish hardening it. This speed is really very enviable. And Wilbur had already started grinding the knife embryo now and looked quite envious. You know it's only been over an hour now okay. Wilbur then pulled out his spray gun and began to show the operation. This was a maneuver that made the forging judges slap the table in praise heating the blade with a blowtorch commonly known as burning the blade. Hardening the blade by burning only the edge will make the back of the knife retain its original toughness while the blade will gain a hardness bonus. The operation of the old knife maker is really extraordinary. There was still one hour left in time. After Naren hammered and played with the knife the root drilling was performed to prevent the second round of hardening from drilling. Yusir struggled with the grinder then finished the hardening. Unexpectedly before the heat dissipated he put the knife in the sink again. Ouch I was speechless watching the forging judge. After quenching the oil directly into the water this is how careless are really not afraid of producing cold hard rupture. Yusir also knew he was done for so he rushed to Ben to check the cracks. You're kind of the first player to ask Ben to inspect the knife. Ben's comment was to sharpen it in a hurry. And Ben's knife was sharpened again and again. After confirming that it was correct Ben performed an acid dip of three pieces. The acid dip can see the alternating lines of soft and hard steel and Ben's handling is really nothing to sneeze at. In the last 15 minutes the Nalan player finishes hardening which is not bad except for being slightly bent. Time is up and the first round of challenges is over. Each of the four contestants did their best to complete the scrap steel challenge. So who had the better knife? First up is Narain's Saxon Bowie knife. The blade handled very cleanly and it would have been better without that bit of flex. Next up is Wilbur's knife which is clearly already a finished knife. With the addition of the burnished edge Nielsen really liked it. Ben Saxon camping knife 3 knives so handsome I've never seen it before. 7 can't resist a few cuts. Last but not least you see his watermelon chopping knife is the worst in this council. The point is he quenched the water and cracked it. Nielsen says it's a shame. After the judges made eye contact they decided to eliminate Yusir. Without the water dipping maneuver it's likely he would have advanced. The remaining three masters advance to the second round and continue forging knives. In this round several contestants need to adjust floors and assemble the hilts. Once completed they are handed over to the judges for rigorous testing. The two hour countdown begins. 
None of the three had too many problems with their knives so they all planned to pick the handle material first. Ben picked African oak for the handle which is a very strong material. Before assembling Ben decided to sharpen it a little more. This was probably the saddest has ever had to sharpen a knife. The type of knife Nalan was figuring was a composite and that handle material had to be pieced to match to make it work. It was a bit of a unique idea. After making the knife handle he first baked the knife embryo with a blowtorch. Then he blew it down in one breath and the bending problem was solved. And Wilbur had already finished assembling the knife handle and started polishing and shaping it this was a bit too efficient. Nalan also finished assembling the hilt after dealing with the blade. Don't say this hilt is still a bit handsome I just don't know how effective it will be in combat. Wilbur on the other hand was obsessed with polishing but one slip of the hand made the nail disappear. Although it doesn't affect the stability of the hilt he obviously can't let this ruin the aesthetics of the hilt as he pursues perfection. Ben had finished fitting the handle at this point and had also begun to grind and shape it. He hadn't done the judging yet but he understood that the feel of the knife was the most important thing. So before sharpening he had already gotten a good look at the judge's hands. This time he was designing it just for them. Time is running out and the hilt polish isnt done yet. Ben scrapes oil off his face and applies it. He's actually utilizing human oil for waxing that's really something. Time is up and the second challenge is over. First up is the Nielsen chopping steak strength test. Ben's knife comes first with the blade intact. Nielsen is very pleased. Wilbur's knife is next it feels good in the hand and the blade is intact. Last was Nalan's knife with an intact blade just more or less bent. The second round was seventh sharpness test for cutting fish. Ben's knife was very sharp. Wilbur's knife was also quite dry. Nalan's knife was equally no slouch. Two rounds of testing have passed and the decision to eliminate Nalan was made after the judges deliberated. Simply because his knife was slightly bent after the strength test. It was a shame for him to walk away from this. In the end Ben and Wilbur advanced to the third final round. The two will go home and hammer Kanda swords to split the difference. The Kanda sword is the most powerful weapon in India. The sword dates back to 320 AD. The word Kanda is taken from Kand which means to cut and destroy. This broad double-edged sword is not only outstandingly convex but many of its features are also first-rate. The two have five days to complete the challenge. The forge requires the blade length to be between 73-78 cm and the hilt guard to be of the Kanda type. At the end of the five days the two men returned with their swords for a high-intensity test and the winner was the current champion. Ben went home and hammered the Dumas steel blank straight away. Just in case there are any mistakes Ben hammers a large steel blank and then hammers a smaller one for the hardening test. That way if anything goes wrong he can correct it. Good lord that's excellent I SNT it. And Wilbur after getting the gauntlet design drawn up also straightened up a big piece of horse. He also made the gauntlets while he started forging and heating them. Geez are they all this well traveled. After hammering out the embryo of the blade he did a meticulous grinding. Unexpectedly as soon as he grinned it down he found a flaw straight away. If this couldn't be solved it would have to be reopened. Time came to the third day. Ben's sword embryo had already been forged. After confirming that there was no mistake he completed the quenching and the result was very good. Next he can hammer the handguard at ease. On the fourth day Wilbur reforged a sword. After polishing he hardened the blade then finished assembling the hilt. Just to be sure he also got the original picture to compare and confirm. This operation was really stable. Time came to the last day. Ben first carefully ground the sword embryo and then assembled the extremely complicated Kanda hilt. Just this bruised little hand tells you how difficult it was for him. Luckily when he was done it turned out pretty good. Five days later the two returned to the field with their swords. Ben's Kanda sword was forged from stacked damas and the whole process was a labor of love to say the least. And Wilbur's sword is made of 80 CRV2 steel with antler hilt material. Both swords are excellent so which one is better? First up is Seven's live test of cutting a pig. Ben's sword comes first. Ben's sword feels very good in his hand and Seven likes it a lot. Next is Wilbur's sword. Wilbur's sword has a very good balance control Seven also recognizes it. The second round is still Seven's sharpness test of chopping the elastic rope with his sword. Ben's sword nearly sends Seven away and the rope only makes a small cut. Wilbur's sword bent right into a banana. After that this test of chopping elastic rope never happened again. To give Wilbur ample opportunity for revenge the show allowed him to straighten his blade and fight again. The third round was a strength test of corky chopping brass. Ben's sword had no problems at all and the hilt still felt great in his hand. While Wilbur's sword struck after only three rounds and a piece of the guard fell right off. 
You were given a chance but you couldn't take it. Congratulations to Ben on his $50,000 sword.